Hello, everyone. I am Benoit, the author of OpenTSDB. Um, and it looks like uh, you gave me uh, three minutes. <laughs> so um, let me uh, tell you the motivation behind OpenTSDB first. OpenTSDB is a uh, distributed time series database. So whenever you have numbers that you want to keep track of over time, uh, you need some sort of a time series database. Uh, and that's typically like if you have a lot of infrastructure, so a lot of people in this room, they run clusters where they store petabytes of data. So they have hundreds of servers. Or if you run a large Hadron Collider or some um, equipment where you have a lot of uh, machinery or servers or large networks, you probably collect a lot of numbers from your equipment. And then you want to store those numbers somewhere in the time series database so that you can keep track of how things are changing. So if you use Hadoop, for instance, and then you have various different types of workloads, then you want to be able to keep track of the performance of your infrastructure, its availability, and all that. So I wrote up NTSDB as a tool that enables you to store trillions of data points very easily and then keep track of how they are changing over time. Uh, and then in this talk, essentially what I'm going to give you is a brief overview of how easy it is to scale up NTSDB to store really large amounts of data. So the basic idea with OpenTSDB is uh, you deploy one or more TSDs, which are time series daemons, uh, in which, uh, to which you send your data points and from which you read back your time series database as form of graphs. And then uh, OpenTSDB stores your data in HBase. So many of you have heard about Hadoop. We've heard it a lot today. HBase is a, uh, one of those NoSQL databases uh, that runs on top of Hadoop. So it's a largely, uh, large distributed scalable database that runs on top of Hadoop. So you can start small with a single node, or you can put 10 nodes, and 10 nodes is already way enough to store more than a trillion data points. Um, that's the nice property of Hadoop and HBase, is that they scale nicely. Uh, we had the definition earlier today of what is big data scalable, so you can just add more nodes if you need to store more data or process more data. So OpenTSDB is also similarly scalable because uh, you can run as many TSDs as you need and they give you additional capacity if you need to send more writes uh, to store more data points or, or store data points with higher throughput or if you need to have more concurrent reads, if you want to download like, uh, or plot graphs that uh, have millions of data points on them. Um, so you can do this very simply by just spinning up multiple TSDs and then connecting to any of them uh, to write your time series data or uh, read, read your data points back. Um, so one of the things also that I found that was uh, quite nice to scale up in TSDB was that if you separate the write load from the read load, then uh, you, you can achieve better isolation between the components. So uh, generally, it's because when you're monitoring infrastructure, you have a constant stream of numbers coming in because you're collecting, like say, CPU utilization, memory utilization, network utilization, uh, latency metrics from all your applications, and you're collecting this all the time, like every 10 seconds or something like that. So you have this very constant workload of new data points streaming in all the time. Uh, Whereas on the, on the read side, you generally do like ad hoc queries or sometimes you pull a dashboard and on the dashboard you see like 42 graphs, each of which has maybe tens of thousands of data points on them. So the read workload tends to be burstier and uh, some of the queries can, quite, can get quite large. So it's easier to scale up on TSDB uh, if you separate the write load from the read load. And this is as you can do this as simply as just running two instances of the program on the same machine. Uh, so it's very simple to achieve. Uh, one of the challenges with the reads is uh, that the reads tend to be quite large. And also in time series databases, you tend to look mostly at recent data. So a lot of people, they pull the same dashboards, a lot of alerting systems. They look also at recent uh, utilization metrics and such. And so you, owe, you tend to look at recent data a lot of the time. So it helps if you can uh, increase your cache hit rate. And you can do this by putting a load balancer in front of your TSDs uh, so that you can redirect the traffic intelligently uh, within your application. And so what this means is that when you want to plot a graph, say like the CPU utilization of a given machine, then the load balancer can look at the query and say, oh, I'm going to hash this query and then send it to server number one, for instance. And then by doing so, you increase your cache hit rate because that very same query always goes to uh, the same server. Um, and so there are a lot of uh, very simple things like this that you can do uh, with just like plain Linux machines and open source software like Varnish, which is uh, an HTTP load balancer that I would recommend to uh, scale your read traffic. 
So that is it. If you want to learn more about OpenTSDB and how you can store uh, all your monitoring data forever and uh, have real-time analytics for your clusters, then come hang out at the poster session outside. Thank you.